All right, everybody, welcome to the video. Today, we're going to talk about server-side rendering versus static rendering versus client-side rendering. This is a deep dive video. This is for people who have done my HTML5 foundations, my CSS3 foundations course, and my JavaScript foundations course. Not required, but if you did the PHP foundations course, that would help as well. So this is a pretty important subject. So we're going with three markers today. You know, if you got three markers in it, it's going to be pretty cool. So this is a new style. Well, not a new style, but this is a, a fancier style video where you got this camera here and you're going to have this thing here where you get to see me draw on paper. So I'm going to zoom into this uh, Twitter thread that I put out. Server rendering versus static rendering versus client-side rendering. Over the last 20 years, I've seen variants of this architectural debate about web apps going back and forth. Of course, server-side rendering without plugins wasn't really possible until, eight, not server-side, excuse me, client-side rendering without plugins wasn't possible until Ajax was fully supported. So I'm going to unpack all this. Don't worry if you don't understand this stuff. It's going to be on understandable. So let me just read this next tweet here. Client-side rendering wasn't natively possible until wide adoption of Ajax. Now, what I'm saying natively, meaning in the web browsers. Now, prior to Ajax, which Microsoft invented in 1999 for Internet Explorer, they really pioneered that. Client-side rendering with web apps was either done with Java applets, which didn't last too long, and more successfully with Flash. But native in-browser rendering with Ajax, and I'll explain what Ajax is all about, of course, is best. Um, and there you go, here's the tweet. One of the things I'm doing now, by the way, is I'm putting stuff on my Twitter feed, at Killer Site, and uh, I'll put out my thoughts, and you'll see sometimes videos that will come out on YouTube are, uh, foreshadowed, if you will, within the Twitter feed. I invite you to join my Twitter. Anyway, let's get into it. So let's start with, uh, when I'm talking about server rendering, I'm talking about web servers or web app servers. And um, so you have a rendering is just basically processing. The processing of the information with code that results in a web page, a dynamic web page to be delivered. So let me just break this down. So you have, let's say, Amazon.com or Google.com or StudioWeb.com. When you go to a site where you're loading up, let's say, an Amazon a products page, it's a dynamic site because that products page is being generated from information inside of the Amazon databases. So if I draw this out, We'll say, uh, we'll say server uh, processing. My spelling will probably be terrible. So anyway, so let's uh, get into it. So when you see a page, like a product page, you got your products, you get your image, etc. All this information about the product is actually held in a, a database. So we'll say this is a database. Now, a database is just a, a program, an app that stores all kinds of information, data. It's a base of data. So what happens when somebody comes around with the web browser, so let's say this is Chrome, could be any web browser, and then what happens, you click, you go to Amazon and you click on a button and you say, I want to see the product page. So what happens, Chrome says, I want to see this page, what the server does, and all the programming that you do, it basically uh, grabs information from the database, loads it, and then presents the page back in Chrome. There's a, there's a little dance in between things. Now, there's a few different strategies, basic strategies, that you can utilize to create this dynamic page. This page, I say it's dynamic because the information is being pulled from databases. It could be pulled from other websites. It could be, it's all kinds of sources where the information presented in that page could be drawn from. The three styles, number one, as I mentioned, was um, they call it server rendering. Two, they call it static rendering. 
rendering. And they have the third, they call it client rendering. Server rendering, static rendering, client rendering. These are three different strategies that you can utilize to generate web apps, the pages in a web app, whether it be no matter what site. So let me just break down these things simply. Server rendering is the most common type of rendering. Basically what happens is when somebody comes to a web page that's dynamic, YouTube page, the Amazon page, a studio web page, where the information is constantly changing, where the information is drawn from a database, as an example, Server rendering, rendering works like this. You write your PHP code or your Python code or your Java code or your Ruby code or your Perl code. You write your code and what the code does is that when a particular page, let's say you have a product page, product detail page on, uh, you want to learn more about the Pixel phone. So you click, I want to learn more about Pixel, boom, all the information about the Pixels hold, held in a database on Amazon's website or on Google's website. And what happens is whenever somebody clicks on that page, they want to see the product details about the Google Pixel 3, all the information about the Pixel 3 is stored in a database. So what happens is as somebody clicks on that link to view the detail page, this page here, the programming, like I said, PHP, Ruby, Java, C Sharp, Perl, Python, etc., it will at that moment grab information from the database and then generate that page with all the information about the Google. So the page will be constructed in real time. So you got a page here and the programming is like either PHP or, uh, or Python or JavaScript or Java, Ruby, whatever. The programming that you write as a software developer will grab information from the database and it will take that information from this database, what holds the information about the pixel, and it will stick it into this page. Now, with your programming, you're going to add in the HTML, HTML5. You're going to add in the CSS3 to make it look good, and probably some JavaScript as well. So every time that page is loaded to view information about this pixel phone, this page is generated on the fly. So that is the most common way in which dynamic websites, web apps, process the pages that you see. Nerds will call these pages, we'll call them the views, because you, you view them, you see them. So that's the most common way that it's done. Another way that it's done is through static rendering. So let me write this out. Uh, Static rendering. So what's static rendering? Well, what static rendering is, is, is similar to server rendering, where when somebody requests the information about this Pixel phone, the page that holds all the details about the Pixel phone that you're going to see is built on the fly and then sent to the web browser. The difference with static rendering is that the pages the page, rather, on the Pixel phone is pre-built. It's already built. So, um, so when somebody comes around wanting to see information about this phone, the server doesn't have to build that page on the fly. It's already been built. It's been statically rendered. Static means it's, it's, it doesn't change. So how does this work? So the architecture is a little different. So. Uh, I'll give you an example. So I had a directory system way back in the day, and it was a combination of server rendering, on-the-fly rendering, on-the-fly production of those pages, and it also had a static component as well. So what would happen, it was a directory and had all kinds of listings for web designers all over North America and the world, in fact. But this list didn't change too much, right? The, the web designers in Montreal, Canada, that, that didn't change every two seconds. That may change once a day, once every 10 days, once, a, once every six months, depending on how, pe how many people were adding themselves to this directory of web designers in Montreal. So the way the system would work 
whenever a new person was added to the directory, let's say a new web design firm said, oh, I want to I add myself to the killer site web design directory, it would, uh, they would go to a uh, form and they would fill in their information, hit enter, and that would be added to the database. What that would do is it would trigger that the app, it would trigger the app to generate that page on Montreal, uh, MTL is short for Montreal, Montreal Web Designers. So what it would do, it would generate that new page on the fly. It would generate, boom, and it would create it, and it would sit there. And this app that created this directory of web designers all over the world, it would generate pages with the listings of web designers by city, by state, by town, only when it would change. So what would happen is that you would look in a directory on the server, there would be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands in fact, tens of thousands of web pages pre-built, right? The system would build these things by grabbing information from the database, But it would only build these things when it when it would only build the pages, the system would only build these pages when something would change in the database that forced it to update one of these pages. So when somebody would come around uh, with a web browser looking for web designers, this I'll say this is Chrome, could be Firefox, any web browser. And they wanted to find information about web designers in Montreal. So it's, hey, send me to web designers in Montreal. Instead of generating this page on the fly, because this was a static rendering, because it was a, that style of web app, the system would just send this HTML page was already pre-created, it was already cooked already, and it would just send that. So that's the big difference. Static rendering produce, produces the pages only when they change. And you're going to see in a directory, you would have you know, hundreds of pages for So for every web design, every city, they would have uh, a different HTML page with the list of all the web designers in that city. And they would only update those pages when it had to. So if you looked in the directory of uh, web designers in, uh, in Canada, there would be hundreds and thousands and thousands of HTML, individual HTML pages, each page representing each city with the listing of all the web designers. Now, the advantage of static rendering, where things are pre-cooked, if you will, the pages are pre-cooked, is that these pages, these individual pages, are only processed and created when they need it to be, when they need to be created. Because which one thing you got to remember, one principle of programming is that when you open a connection with PHP or Python or, or Java or JavaScript, whatever language, whenever you open a connection, you, you, you communicate with a database. It could be the database, could be uh, MySQL, it could be Oracle. It could be a MongoDB, depending on the type of data that you're storing. Um, whatever the database type, traditionally, opening that connection to the database to grab information from the database is a very expensive process. It takes a lot of CPU, memory. It's typically the bottleneck in most web apps, typically the bottleneck. So if you can minimize the amount of times you talk to that database, Generally speaking, the better, the more efficient your app is going to be, right? So this static rendering is pretty cool that way because it generates all these thousands, if not tens of thousands of pages, depending on your site. And it only changes, it only hits the database when it needs to. So when you have like, you know, a site where it lists all the restaurants in Montreal or all the web designers in Montreal, this is not going to change too often. It might change once a day, it might change once a month, who knows? But what that means is that when you have a static rendered base web app, that means all these pages can be served out to people without having to talk to the database every time. Allows it to be a much more efficient system. Whereas when you have dynamic rendering, like okay, we had uh, here, or server rendering, um, every time that page is loaded with server rendering, 
the language, the PHP, the Python, the JavaScript, et cetera, has to go to the database. It has to grab the information from the database. It has to generate the page, which is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then it sends it to the person. So it's a lot more processing every single time. Now, before you guys go, oh, boy, I got to go out there and just create static rendered sites. These days, most sites will never hit or come even close to hitting the uh, capacity of modern day web servers and web programming languages. They're just so powerful. But this is one strategy, uh, one style of web app creation. So the final one I want to get into, is this is an overview. The final one is I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about client side rendering. This is the most modern. Now, this was made possible because of something called Ajax, which uh, basically Microsoft invented this in 1999. This is groundbreaking. And what's Ajax? Ajax allowed for the first time web browsers to talk. Okay, I'm not going to write this out. Ajax allowed for the first time using JavaScript to allow you to open up a new connection to the server and grab more information and dynamically update parts of the page. Prior to Ajax, you could only update the whole page. You'd have to go back. If you'd something, if one letter changed in a page, if one letter changed in a page or you wanted to change color text, to, in the old school, you had to go all the way back to the server. The server would have to rebuild the entire page again and then pull it back again. Ajax allowed you to update parts of the page. So you could, uh, you see that in more advanced systems. So if you have a page, all kinds of information, you click a button here, click, and then you load a different image here. And then you click again, another image is here, loads here. So there's different strategies, but for this example, so instead of having to load the whole page again, that was the old school way, you could just have the web browser just load this part of the page here. This page gets reloaded, uh, from the server, we'll say this is a server, okay? So that's Ajax. Now, client-side rendering is basically what happens with that, it's a newer style, is that instead of loading all kinds of HTML and CSS and JavaScript into the page with, it, with all the information there, what client-side rendering does, it sends up minimal amount of HTML and CSS and then what it does, it sends up JavaScript, and then the JavaScript will then uh, call information from the server, will pull information from the server, and then build the page. So this is another style. It has certain advantages in that it creates a perception of speed because instead of having to load the whole page over the, over the internet, you just have to load a very lightweight page, so the page loads very quickly, and then these different portions can load at you know later on. So you might see the page come up real quick, and then you can see, boof, boof, this part of the page load, and then this part of the page load, that part of the page load. That's all done and handled by client-side rendering using JavaScript. There's different strategies, of course. This is a very simple overview. Now, the downside with this is that you have much more complex JavaScript, and uh, you're reliant on the speed of the processor of the uh, person surfing the site although that's becoming less and less of an issue because processor speed in home computers are just getting more and more powerful. So there, there you go. That is the three uh, rendering styles, if you will, of modern day web apps. You have the traditional server side rendering or server rendering where every time a page is requested from a web server, that page is dynamically created. Information is pulled from databases, pulled from the file system, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript is put together and sends a whole page to person. And then somebody else clicks on that same page, the process starts from scratch again. The system, the PHP code, or the Python code, or the JavaScript code, or the Java code, makes a call to the database, grabs the information from the database, grabs information from, uh, if you're scraping from some API, then puts it together, creates the HTML, creates the CSS, boom, 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 puts it all together, bang, sends the page out. That's traditional rendering. I'm just recapping here. And then if you go back, um, you have the static rendering where the pages are pre-cooked. The pages are pre-cooked. So when somebody comes and visits a page, 
long, let's say, wanting to see uh, information about the Google Pixel, that page has been pre-rendered and it's cooked, it's already baked, so that when most people will load this page, it just, the server just has to send the page out with the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript. It doesn't have to go to the database, so it's a lot less processor intensive. It can handle much more traffic much more easily. And the final one is the client-side rendering, where a minimal amount of HTML and CSS is sent up, and there's no database calls. The JavaScript is sent, and then when the page loads, using the JavaScript, the JavaScript will then communicate with the server to pull information from the database. So this creates a perception of faster load times and, uh, and speed, so it makes the site more usable. But there's downsides and pros and cons to each of these approaches. A lot of times in modern web apps, they'll do a combination of these things, depending on circumstances. Like with Studio Web, we do a combination of these things, although we're generally, generally speaking, we're more or less reliant on uh, uh, server server rendering, server processing with every page load, although we do do some um, client-side rendering as well. And we haven't done any static because, as I said, modern-day programming languages and modern-day server computers are so bloody fast. It's, it's like, unless you're like Facebook or Instagram or, or Twitter or something, the need to, uh, to do static, uh, static, rendering is uh, very, very little. Now, the problem with static rendering, there's certain areas where you just couldn't use it. Right? You couldn't use static rendering on a page, like a shopping cart page, where the page constantly changes. Because if you know, you're adding products to the cart, the page constantly changes. So you have to keep going to the database anyway. So you know, it doesn't work there. So static rendering has a certain limited application. And uh, whereas client rendering, and traditional just server rendering is much more broad. These days, I suggest most people, in most situations, I would just stick to server rendering. Although, again, if you have a, a one-page web app, then that's, of course, is client-side rendering. In the old days, client-side rendering before Ajax, and even after Ajax, until Ajax was widely adopted, because it wasn't widely adopted for years, after Microsoft invented. The most prominent was before, before Ajax type of uh, client-side rendering, people would use Flash. They would load in the Flash client, the Flash plugin. And the Flash plugin was like a container, and then they would use Flash to grab information from the server. And that was the, the process. But, but when Flash got killed by Steve Jobs, effectively, um, you know, everybody just went to HTML5 and Ajax and client-side rendering with JavaScript. Anyway, that's pretty much it. This is a brief overview of, of a server rendering, static rendering, and uh, client-side rendering. I don't know if I confused you or not. It's an overview. Even if you take one or two things out of this, you've advanced your knowledge about uh, web app development. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.